flow. We have a 2004 Zip Grand Cherokee that failed state inspection. Um, the steering does not shake, but um, the wheel does. So, I don't know if you can see it. Can you shake the wheel for you? It's the left to right. Left to right motion, not up and down, or up and down as well. So probably ball joint or the tire at end. So we'll take the tire out and start taking parts apart. Okay, I removed the two bolts that are holding the caliper together. It's a uh, 70 millimeters. And um, we take the caliper out. Hang it somewhere. Okay, working on the caliper out. And now we're taking out the bracket. They are 18 millimeters, two bolts. And the bracket is out. There's the bracket. I hang the brake caliper. So now we have to take out the rotors. Okay, this is the outer tie rod. And um, you can see it. If I take a pliers, bear with me because I'm trying to videotape with one hand and uh, work with the other. It's not an easy job. You can tell the movement it has. But I also believe is the bull joint on the bottom. If you don't fix the tie rod, the steering shakes, and then the bull joints go bad. So when something goes uh, wrong, you have to take care of it before it spreads. So I'm going to take this pin here and uh, I'm going to take the nut off and take out the tie rod. Good idea to count the threads so you put the other one just about right before you go for an alignment. So I'm going to count the threads, take this bolt out, lose this one and untie the rod and it should come right out. Okay, I remove the tie rod and upper bolt. It's a 19 millimeter. And uh, what I did here, I count the threads. I also put a little paint and uh, that way I remember to put the new one in just about where it's supposed to be. Uh, the other bolt, to get it loose, it's a 15 millimeter. Okay, now, um, I put the nut back in here and I'm going to use the puller to do the job. This little puller has worked before. I haven't tried it zip, but uh, let me try it now to see if I can pop it out. You can use that or something like this. If you don't want to damage it, best to use this one. So by tightening here, you might just pop it. Okay. It just popped and uh, I'm going to take the nut off. This little tool works like a charm every time. Okay, so how it is. So now we have to rotate. Definitely is damaged. I don't think it's supposed to have so much movement in here. I got a new one, but uh, this is my problem here. So, I'm working on the left side on the Jeep, on the outer tie rod. I remove this bolt to release the, the bracket. Uh, the threads to take the left side outer tie rod is by on reverse, so don't try to untie it uh, counterclockwise, untie clockwise, like so. I'm removing the old one at this point. So, 
console. Okay, this is the outer tie rod and the zip. And some problems I'll be having is, you know, the steering is a little bit loose. So I believe it's not supposed to move freely like this. So we got a new one, $30 for the zone and uh, install. Okay, that's the new one. And this is the old one. And like I said, the old one has the movement. The new one has nothing. They look the same, just double check before you install. And uh, go ahead and install. Okay, uh, I want to replace the ball joint on the Jeep. Uh, it's the lower ball joint. Uh, I remove the tie rod end and uh, I still see movement. Um, so by putting a crowbar in there, it helps me to see movement on the lower part. I don't know if you can see it, so I'm going to replace the ball joint. Okay, working on the wheel bearing. Um, actually, I um, removed the rotor and now I have to remove this 36 millimeter. I remove this pin. And um, next is to remove the 36 millimeter. Okay, 36 millimeter removed. And uh, what I gotta do now is to remove the wheel bearing, which are three bolts right here. Uh, you gotta access from the inside to the back here, to the back of the wheel. I believe this is the one here. Uh, yes, this one here, one, and one on the top two, and the other one, three. And the bearing assembly will come out. Go ahead and remove the bearing housing now. Okay, now these bolts here are 13 millimeters and uh, they're really pretty tight very well. The life depends on it, so I'm using this big extension to help me out. I got one already loose. Okay, sorry, I have to hold the video and try to untie at the same time, but there are three bolts. All right, that's one. One on the top and one on the other side. And that should be able to remove the bearing housing. Good idea to change the bearing now if you want to do so. Okay, the three bolts are removed. We are taking out the bearing and uh, trying to get to the bolt joint. Here comes the bearing. Okay, so if you want to take the bearing out, this is the way to do it. If you want to take out the shaft, uh, the drive axle, that's the way to do it as well. And you just pull it out. So after you move the bearing, just pull the axle out. And there it comes. Nice. So inspect the boots or replace if you have to. The bearing is in here, so we had to take out the axle to do the bolt joint. Okay, the bolt is out. Now you can see the joint. The bolt joint is in there. And uh, we, it's pressed in. So I went to AutoZone and I, I rent this tool. I have to figure out how, which one applies and then pop it out and press the other one in. So it's a pull and a pressure. So I will figure out and uh, it gets back to you. Okay, still working on the ball joints. Uh, it's not an easy job. Best to take it to a mechanic. Um, I rent a bunch of tools over there. Uh, there are kits for Chrysler, but 
I got to AutoZone and I had to rent all this to find the correct adapter. And um, what I'm trying to do right now is I release the bolt, the bolt joint on the top. And I'm taking the knuckle out. There is the knuckle that so comes right off. So now you can work on the both joints. Um, best to disconnect the ABS sensor, which is right here. But for now, I just hang it up there. And it'll be fine. Now, I don't know if I want to replace the upper one. It looks like it's newer than the bottom one. This is definitely busted. You can tell how it's, this is done completely. So um, now I'm going to assemble the tool. And uh, I will try to... This goes, you push this downwards, and uh, then you have to push it back in again. A lot of work, they assemble the entire brake system. The tie rod end is best to come out and has to be replaced anyway. The, we removed all these things to get to the ball joint. Everything is out. Okay, that's what the machine looks like, the puller, the longer one on the bottom, so the tie rod bolt or not can go right through it this is one here it has to be a smaller so it goes down with uh, with the the bolt joint it's pretty tight okay after a long time I got through you can see on the top uh, here it started going let me get the light on for you you can see on the top, I already went through it. So with a little bit more, um, it will pop right out. So that's what I keep on doing right now. Uh, a little bit more, it's ready to come out. It was very difficult to set up the tool and find the correct uh, uh, part that works. Finally, this carbonation works. You're going to ride through it and about to come out. You can see it now, that's halfway through. It's halfway through right now. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to have to change the setup again to a longer, a longer one, so I can go all the way through. But uh, basically it has moved now, so I'm good to go. A little bit more and it's almost out. Okay, happy to say this ball joint is officially out. You can see how the tool is uh, set up for the final push. Everything came out, including the ball joint. And here it is, it's inside here. There you go. So, again, this is up right so I'm gonna clean up in here a little bit the upper one it was replaced because I can tell the fitter here is for grease I don't have it on the original and uh, I'm gonna clean up a little bit and now I'm gonna prepare to get the new one which is here and I'm gonna try to push it back so I have to figure out the correct uh, way of pushing it this time good luck to you guys uh, it's not an easy job so best to take it to a mechanic for the ones who want to try don't follow my way this is just to give you an idea um, do whatever works safety first and um, good luck okay we're installing the jeep grand cherokee lower left ball joint and um, clean the air a little bit and now we there's a new one the air is clean push it in a little bit enough to get the tool start going so there it is now have to figure out which ones are the correct parts and try to push it back okay we installing the bushing I believe that is something can work. I'm gonna try to push the ball joint in right now. So, you know, figure out the parts, 
that might work on your car, but uh, this seems to be okay at this point. Okay, it's working at this point. You can see it. It's going in. I just want to get I think it's going in, it's working fine. That's how much we still have to go. I'm going to check the setup again just in case I don't I need uh, another extension or another part in here. And uh, continue till it's almost there. Okay, this is the setup for this uh, uh, installation of the ball joint. Um, I tried to get the numbers for the parts, so maybe make it easier for you guys. Uh, it's really pressed on. Uh, best to leave it to a professional mechanic to do this work. If you do it yourself, be careful. Okay, working on the 2004 Grand Cherokee. We are doing the ball joint and the process. We removed all these things to get to the ball joint. And um, now we try to put everything back together. I just installed the new ball joint. Is the lower one. You can see down here. And uh, the upper one was greased and it was newer, not the other one. So now it's in, and next thing I do, I will clean and place back or see the axle, and then the bearing. All it has to be cleaned first. If they have to be replaced, that's a good time to do it. I got to get new rotors and brakes on the car. Um, working on the uh, also okay. The tie rod, how the tie rod end is done. All I got to do is uh, tie the bolts and go through the safety pin make sure you don't forget this this is important so we'll go through it and um, I measure like I said the turns here so I put it just about where it was before tie this bolt here and this one here put the pin and the tie rod and it's done all right we're going to install the pipe shaft and um, everything is nice and clean. I already installed a new tie rod, a new ball joint, and in there, I don't know if you can see it. And uh, I don't think there's any special way of going in, just uh, push it all the way in. So here it comes. Always the light is an issue. I also try to work with one hand and video with the other. Well, turn it till it clicks in. And it's both of my hands at this point, so I have to push it back in and uh, I'll get back to you. Five shaft is in. Go. Now I gotta put the wheel bearing. I wanna clean it a little bit and uh, I put a wheel bearing, one, two, three bolts. So all this work was to replace the lower bolt joint. But if you wanna take out the shaft, this is the way to do it. Uh, good luck. Okay, now we're installing the wheel bearing. So all you gotta do is just uh, Push it in. It's in place already. Make sure that all three of the housing for the bolts are aligned and you're good to go. Tie the three bolts from the back and the 36 millimeter here. And that's that. Next up, installing rotors and brakes. Okay, wheel bearing is done. All the bolts are tight. Now we're going to install the rotors. Now the bracket and the parts. 
And uh, this side uh, is complete with a new tie rod end, new rotors and brakes. So next side now. Looks good, everything is back in uh, where it's supposed to be. Ready for the tire and do the other side.